Welcome to the final wager. Today, we'll be discussing some of the math behind two-player wagering situations, particularly a concept called breakpoints. In part one of my wagering tutorial, I walked you through the basic steps for calculating wagers. You know, rule number one, the leader always wagers to win. Rule number two, the trailer positions himself to win if the leader gets it wrong, and so on. In part two, I discuss situations in which it makes sense for two players to wager for a tie. I suggested these occurred when the trailer's score, compared with the leader's score, is in the ratio one half, two thirds, or three quarters. Now we're going to tie those two concepts together. The ratios one half, two thirds, and three quarters are also known as breakpoints. There are an infinite number of breakpoints. In each case, the numerator, the number on top, is one less than the denominator, the number on the bottom. Or, if you prefer algebra, they take the form k over k plus 1. At or above each breakpoint, a new wagering possibility opens up for the trailer. In other words, the closer the trailer is to the leader, the more ways he has to win. Here, we'll look at the first five breakpoints, all the way up to when the trailer has five-sixths of the leader's score. Let's walk through them. In each example, the leader will have 12,000, because 12,000 is easily divisible by the numbers 2 through 6. The one-half breakpoint is the first time the trailer can actually catch the leader. If the trailer has 6,000, the trailer will need to double up. At the two-thirds breakpoint, the trailer can win with a zero wager, assuming the leader wagers for the lockout. Here, the trailer has 8,000. If the trailer wagers everything, the leader will need to wager 4,000 to cover. But an incorrect response will leave the leader with 8,000, the trailer score. Two-thirds is also the first time mind games come into play. If the trailer wagers small, the leader can guarantee a victory by also wagering small. At three quarters, the trailer can safely cover a zero wager by the leader. If the trailer, with 9,000, doubles up, he'll have 18,000, so the leader will need to wager 6,000. If he's wrong, he'll be left with 6,000, which means the trailer can wager up to 3,000 but notice that the difference between their scores is also 3,000, so the trailer can make that wager to cover a zero by the leader. At the four-fifths breakpoint, the trailer can cover what I call an unsafe wager by the leader. The trailer has 9,600. If the leader wants to cover him, that will require a wager of 7,200. If the leader gets it wrong with that wager, he'll be left with 4,800, which means the trailer can wager up to 4,800. The difference between their two scores is 2,400, which means the trailer can safely cover that. If the leader decides to wager 2,400 so as not to fall below the trailer, an unsafe wager, the trailer could wager 4,800. And finally, at or above the 5 6 breakpoint, the trailer can neutralize the advantage of mind games the leader has. This might take a little explanation. Here, the trailer has 10,000. If he doubles up, he'll have 20,000, which means the leader will need to wager 8,000. If the leader's wrong with that wager, he'll be left with 4,000, meaning the trailer can wager up to 6,000. The difference between these two scores is 2,000, so if the leader wagers 0, the trailer can catch him with a wager of 2,000. And if the leader makes the unsafe wager of 2,000, the trailer can catch him with a wager of 4,000. Now, here's where the mind games come into play. If the leader assumes the trailer is going to make this safe 6,000 wager, he might wager 4,000 to cover him. But if the leader gets it wrong with that wager, 
he'll be left with 8,000, which would be the trailer's total should he wager 2,000 and get it wrong. In response, the leader could just wager zero. Of course, that risks a loss to the rational 4,000 to 6,000 wager range for the trailer. Remember what happened between Colby Burnett and Celeste DiNucci in the Battle of the Decades? Trailing Colby by 200, Celeste wagered 1399, the most she could without risking a loss to Tom Nisley. Colby's wager of 199 meant that, had Celeste gotten it right, she would have won, regardless of whether Colby got it right or wrong. Colby could have wagered 1200 had he anticipated this, in which case Celeste could only win if she got it right and Colby got it wrong. But Celeste might have also wagered, say, 400, in which case Colby would have lost had they both missed. Above the 5 6 breakpoint, the leader has to properly predict where the trailer will end up. Sometimes that's a tough proposition. And that's why breakpoints are just another fascinating aspect of what I like to call the final wager.